However, the church is speaking to the faithful at all levels about theological education. The message is that theological education is the responsibility and task for all of us. We are both theological educators. There is an ancient statement of the church. If you are a theologian, you will pray truly. If you pray truly, you are a theologian. It is true to the extent that in as much as theology is about discerning the will of God, discovering God in all things, and subjecting oneself to the reign of Christ, theology is an act of prayer. The truth is that out of the faith, all of, all of us continuously engage in the activity of God, speaking about God, communicating with God, and trying to understand God's purpose in our lives. As I preach this Matthew text today, I want to get you something from it. I want you to know that there is hope for your situation. No matter what it is you think you need today, God holds the key to it. I want you to take the text and plead to, the, to this woman and share a few thoughts and teach us that a crumb from the hand is more than enough. Let's examine this passage together and find the help we need for our lives today. The woman petition. The reason she came to Jesus is because he was concerned about her daughter who was possessed by evil, poor, evil spirit. He came to Jesus because faith and hope had been sparked in her heart. She was desperate and saw Jesus as her only hope. The reason she cried is because she was heartbroken over the condition of her daughter and determined to get her help she needed. The woman persistent. This woman comes to Jesus for help and when she doesn't get the response, he stays after Jesus until she gets what she wants. The obstacles of faith. To see that her need was made and her daughter was healed, this woman had overcome many obstacles. It seems that she met resistance to her request at every turn. Yet, she persisted until she achieved her goals. Let's examine the obstacles she faced and overcome by faith. She had to overcome race. This tells us two things about this woman. Firstly, she was descended from violent people. She was a member of a doomed race. Secondly, she was from a region known for corrupt religion practices. She had to overcome religion. She came to Jesus and called out to him and said, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Here she was a gentle woman, crying out to the Jews Messiah. She had not come to Jesus through the door of Judaism. But Jesus didn't, didn't, answer, didn't answer a word. She had to overcome racism. When the disciples see and hear the gentle woman calling out to their Messiah, they react by telling Jesus to send her away. The disciples wouldn't have listened to a woman nor to a Gentile. But Jesus listened, and perhaps he learned something from her quick faith. Could it be that he learned that faith is not confined to any or one group nation of people? 
Could it be that he saw God already at work among people of other cultures, awakening with them an awareness of his presence, enabling them to respond in faith? He did not convert her. She had to come rejection. As Jesus speaks to this woman, his words appear harsh to our ears. His words must have shaken her to the very core of her being. When she persists, Jesus told her, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Yes, Lord, she replied, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. The disciples rejected her. Millions of women across the world suffer rejection in society and also in the church. Like those 124 Nigerian girls who have been adopted by Bokoma Haram, saying girls don't have to be educated. In some countries, they are most treated like human beings. As women like Hadasha, a Hebrew name of Queen Esther of the Bible, we are called to arise and take our position as intercessors. She had to overcome reality. The reality of this situation are harsh. The religion men did not seem to care about her or her situation at all. It must have appeared to her that her situation was hopeless. Some of you are looking at some of the same barriers today. How well do you listen to one another? across barriers of religion, race, and gender. Often it seems that we spend too much time trying to get our own message across and fail to listen what others have to, to share with us to help us grow an understanding of God. Sometimes we miss the point on faithful living because we haven't found a way to look and listen. Your faith will not be defined by what you receive from God, but what it takes to, step, to stop you from getting to God. According to Matthew chapter 15, verse 28, Jesus answered the woman, you have great faith. Her daughter was healed from the very hour. Get that, ladies? Women can have great faith. Can you see? God might say no to you to test your faith, to make a person of great faith out of you. Don't let your field shield down even if God say no you might miss the opportunity of rising to the experience of great faith. Take heart today, brothers and sisters. There is hope. Today may be the day when God speaks in your soul and says, it's going to be all right. I have taken, taken care of it. You might say, preacher, you don't understand how big my problem is. No, I don't, but God does. As I come to my conclusion, a little crumb from the lost table might be all you need today. Regardless of what you need today, you can come to Jesus and get it. Even if you have sought him, for it is not the past and receive no answer, today might be the day when he says, 
Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. Has he spoken to you today? Get to him and get what you need from him.